Greetings, it is Max Diddley here, and today I'm here for another C++ tutorial to be get that A in your coursework. And today we're here with reading from a CSV file, so let's get right into it. Firstly, make sure you have these four libraries imported. So now let's look at what we, what we got. Firstly, we've got our function declaration for reading the record from a file. It's actually, I'm actually using a vector as I, we want to return an array a string array and each element is going to be its own individual field of a record. It's easier to just use a vector than an array when doing C++. A vector is basically an array with more functionality like being able to change the size dynamically and it integrates and synergizes really well with many other functions in C++. They're very similar to arrays so I'm going to be using them. So we're creating a vector array here for a string type. So it's just a string array, but you can do more. We're calling the function read record from file, and we need to pass in two pieces of data, a string for the file name and a string for the search term. File name is just the name of the file we want to read a record from, and the search term is basically, what value are we gonna look for in a specific field to determine which record we want to read? For instance, let's say we open up tutorial.txt, and I'm going to be using the ID to find a record I want to read. By the way, these records are ID, name, and year born. Let's say my search term is 1234, and we want to use the ID to determine if we need to read the record or not from the file. We'll look at this record firstly and be like, right, the ID is 9999. Therefore, it doesn't match 1234, so this is not the record we want. We then read 1234. That matches the search term of 1234, therefore it is the record that we want to read. So then we get all this data from the file, and then we stop, because this we, we found the data we want, so we don't need to bother reading the rest. That's basically what's going on here. And you can make the search term whatever you want, in terms of which field you want to look at, but in this case, I want to look at the first one. By the way, make sure when you do this that you uh, declare your function in your header file. I'm doing it in the main file because it's just quicker for a very simple tutorial. Now, let's look at the actual function. So it's std vector, std string. Make sure you give everything STDs because they're good in C++. Uh, it's called read record from file and we're passing std string file name and std string search term. And we also just created a little vector to store the record. So to create a vector you do std colon colon vector std. Uh, you put a file type in here, I'm doing string, and then you just put a name. And in here we're actually calling our function. So since it's returning a vector string, we need to assign this function that when we call it to a vector string. So so we create a vector string called data. So this is what we do. Then we do equals read record from file. Then we pass in tutorial.txt and then a number we want to search for. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. And then we return zero at the end. So let's get into the actual code of our little function that we have here. Firstly, we have std, if stream, and file. Uh, if stream stands for input file stream. Essentially, we are getting input from a file. And then we do file.open, then we do file name, which is the variable here. If you don't know why we're doing this, well, basically, think of this. This is an object. However, think of it as you asking someone to, to read a book for you. Essentially, you just give them the book and then they're going to read everything in the book to you. And then file.open is essentially them just opening the book. File, by the way, is being referenced here. So this is just referencing this object. Now we've got a few variables. Firstly, we've got boolean record found equals false. Essentially, we're going to set this to true when we find a record we wish to read. So we stop reading the rest of the file to be more efficient. And these are just going to be the variables to store each field of a record we want to read. So you've got field 1, field 2, and field 3. You can have as many fields as you like. Right, this is a big while loop here, but let's break it down so you can understand it easily. 
Firstly, this is a while loop, so it's going to execute until the condition is no longer met. And the condition is while get line, file, field one, and comma, and not record found. Essentially, for this while loop to execute, firstly, record found has to be equal to false. Put an exclamation mark in front of a variable is essentially checking for if something's false. If this becomes true, this will terminate the loop. Get line essentially just gets a line of a file or a string. However, if we put in a delimiter, aka a comma in the third parameter, it will only read up to the next comma in the file, which is really handy. So essentially, this is just going to read up until the next comma. But what we do is we pass in the name of the file, then we pass in what, what string we want to assign whatever we read to. So since this is going to be the first field of a record, we want to assign it to field 1. And then we put in a comma, because that's the delimiter. So essentially, in this case, get line is just going to read up until the next comma, which does all the string splitting for us, so we can get each field separately and not have to do any array manipulation to do it ourselves. Then we do the same again for this. We essentially just want to get a line or read up until the next comma and assign it to field 2. Then we want to read up until the next line. Essentially, if you're going to add more than one record to more than more records than three, you will just do this multiple times and the final field of your record, you want to read up until the next line because at the very end of a record, we don't put a comma, we put a new line. So slash n is new line. Then we want to do if field one is equal to the search term. Essentially, it does our search term matched the search field or the first field of this record, implying that we want to read it. If so, we set found record to true. Basically, this will terminate the loop. And then we just add all three fields to our a little vector. So we do records.pushback, which essentially just adds it to an array like you would normally add something to an array. Then you just pass in field one, field two, and field three. Also, if there is nothing left to read in the file, get line will just return a false, and that would also terminate the loop. After all of that, we put return record to return the record. However, one thing we're going to do before we do that to prove that it works, we're going to basically print out the record. So to print out elements of a vector, or to get elements of a vector, it's just like getting an element of an array. You just put the name of the vector like you would with the name of an array, then you do a square bracket, the element, and then another square bracket. They're very similar to arrays, like you can just treat it like an array if you really want to. So now, that's all the code, let's see if it works. So, it, no errors occurred, and it read 1234 Bill 1998. Since our search term is 1234, let's check if that's correct. Indeed it is. The search term, it, it got the record with the search term of 1234. Uh, let's try 1345. And let's see what happens. As you can see, it read the record with the ID of 1345, which is correct here. So guys, thanks for being a great audience. If you enjoyed this, be sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. I'll be posting tutorials on a weekly basis, so don't worry. If you've got a suggestion, leave it in the comments below. If you want to say I'm amazing and thank me, you can leave a comment. It really does make my day, by the way, seeing a positive comment. If you've got a question or a concern, you can also leave a comment and I'll try and respond to you and help you out. Thanks for being a great audience and I'll see you next time.